Good day, good day everyone. And once again, we are back together looking at grade 10 um, electrostatics. So if you have not subscribed, please make sure you're part of the family. And of course, you know, your uncle will always be giving you good content when it comes to maths and science, right? So um, we are looking at the grade 10 electrostatics today, right? And um, we have already covered, you know, the theoretical part of this. You can watch this in video one and two. Now let's look at uh, a question, right? They say to us, we've got two identical insulated spheres, X and Y, suspended by threads um, uh, from a ceiling, and they are held at a small distance apart, as shown in the diagram, right? So they say sphere X carries a charge of... Uh, uh, that magnitude 4 times 10 uh, minus 18, okay, uh, which, which uh, while rather sphere Y uh, has an excess of 30 electrons. Now note, in this case, I've already highlighted there, right, that you've got excess electrons. So that simply means that um, sphere Y will actually be negatively charged, right? So, they say to us, calculate the magnitude of the charge on sphere Y. Right, so what we are going to do, okay, we know that the number of electrons will always be equal to the charge divided by the unit charge of an electron, right? Uh, in this case, we know that we've got 30 electrons in excess. We want the charge, but we know the unit charge of an electron is 1.6 times 10 negative 19 right so what we're going to do is just cross multiply there so q times 1 that will be q and 30 multiplied by 1.6 negative 1.6 exponent negative 19 okay so let's whip out our calculator there so that will be 30 times okay uh, that's negative 1.6 exponent. Okay, I get a value of 4.8. Um, so that's 4.8 exponent times 10 to the exponent minus 18, right? And remember that charge is measured in coulombs. Now, uh, please remember, I almost forgot that negative there, uh, just to remind us that uh, it is negatively charged, okay? Right, and then the next question, they say, the spheres are now released and they move towards each other, okay? Right, they say, give a reason why sphere, spheres X and Y move towards each other. Now, obviously, they are oppositely charged, so we know that unlike charges attract, so in this case, uh, that will be because of the force of attraction between the, uh, the two charges, okay? Right, so we'll say a force of attraction, okay, exists between X and Y, right? So they will pull each other because uh, uh, between X and Y, all right? Now let's make a little bit of space here. Okay, let's push this thing down. All right, now let's go on to the next question. Right, now they say to us, we've got, and they say the spheres are allowed to touch each other, right? After touching, they move away from each other, right? State the principle of conservation of charge in words, right? So remember, uh, the principle of conservation of charge uh, simply states that the net charge in an isolated system, right, is conserved or rather stays constant uh, for any physical process, right? So we say that the net charge, okay, of an isolated system Okay, stays constant. Okay, during any physical process, right? So please remember that 
Um, I will not be in the habit of writing these out uh, fully, uh, but in this case, given that um, you know um, we are starting out, I will do so. Uh, but just remember those uh, those definitions, okay? Right now, the next question they say to us: calculate the charge on each fear after they have separated. Now, remember the moment that you cause charges to touch each other. So there's X and Y, okay? So X and Y touching each other. What happens? There's a transfer of electrons that will take place up until we get to that point where they will have equal charges, right? Why? Because we've got equal spheres as well, okay? So we know that X has a positive charge, okay? And we know why we just calculated the charge of Y. We said that's negative 4.8. Okay, right. So what will be the charge after we separate them? So it means that we'll just simply say the net charge will be the charge of X plus the charge of Y divided by 2. And so that will be 4 times 10 negative 18 plus note that y is negative so you need to put that sign there that's divided by 2 okay right so in this case what does that give us okay you can calculate it but I'd already seen in that case that you've got both of them to the uh, um, power minus 18 Right, so you can just say 4 minus 4.8, that will give you 0 0.8, isn't it? You divide that by 2, that gives you 0 0.9. Uh, but let's put it in scientific form. So we've got uh, 4 exponent negative nine, uh, 18, right? Plus a negative 4.8 exponent negative 18, right? And there we got, uh, we get an answer, right? And we take that answer and we divide it by 2. And what does it give us? Negative 4 exponent minus 19. This is in coulombs. Okay, so it means each sphere will now have a charge, a negative charge for that matter. So it means electrons were transferred in this case uh, from sphere y uh, to sphere x, right? That's negative 19 coulombs. And of course, that's uh, negative 4 exponent negative 19 coulombs. Okay, so please note, it means that electrons were transferred from uh, x to y. And of course, if they should ever ask us to determine the number of electrons that were transferred, right, please remember... In this case, all we do is that we take the change in charge and we divide it by, uh, in this case, the unit charge of an electron. Okay, right. I'm not going to really delve into that, uh, but just remember, I would take the charge of uh, X final minus the charge of X initial. Right, if we really wanted those charges, so charge of X final minus the charge of x initial and we can divide that by the unit charge uh, of an electron but we'll look at that even more further um, uh, another time all right so i hope that you understood that ladies and gents and hopefully you will get full marks in this session uh, in this section otherwise i'll see you guys next time shop shop